Welcome back to the Irregular Pioneer channel. I'm your host, Matt, and thank you for joining me for another episode. Well, today we're doing another book review, and this time we're reviewing Leaving the Witness by Amber Scora. I'm just going to tell you straight from the top, this is a great book. You're going to want to get your hands on a copy, whether you buy it, whether you get it from your local library, whether you get the audio book, however you consume books, please get a copy of Leaving the Witness. It is a truly captivating book. Now, Amber Scora has been interviewed by many big names. This book is getting serious publicity. And as a former Jehovah's Witness, I love that so many people are getting to see the perspective of someone who is a part of the same cult that I was. She's been interviewed by Trevor Noah of The Daily Show. She's been interviewed by Maria Shriver's newsletter. She's been interviewed by NPR. The book has been reviewed by The New York Times, People Magazine, Oprah's Book Club. She's even been interviewed by many XJW YouTubers. It's truly fantastic to see how much publicity Amber Score is getting and that people are really getting a, a, a bird's eye view of the Jehovah's Witness lifestyle, how it can affect people's lives and how ultimately you can get out of the cult and learn to expand your mind and see the world in a different way than the one you were raised in. So let's get into it. Now, Amber's book talks a lot about her life growing up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And ultimately, the biggest part of the book is that she became a missionary uh, with her husband in China. And she went to, of course, preach the good news of God's kingdom. As a Jehovah's Witness, you know very well that you are told that the end must be preached to the, I mean, the word must be preached to the ends of the earth. And then the end will come. So, of course, witnesses are always, you know, working hard to serve where the need is great and go to other countries and other continents so that they can spread the good news of Jehovah's kingdom. But the interesting part about serving in a country like China is that the Jehovah's Witness work is banned there. So one of the very interesting things right off the top from her story is understanding how witnesses function in a place where their work is banned. And for someone like me who was always interested when I was a witness about how that work was done, I, I found that absolutely riveting. Now, from Amber's personal side, her, her journey to waking up and gaining freedom and realizing that she was in a cult and she was, you know, really in a box mentally, I thought was a very, very interesting uh, theme that was woven throughout the book. And I just want to mention, some of us are not really into reading books that much, but it's a relatively short book, uh, 270 something pages, not a very long read. It's very easy to read. It cuts out the fluff and it's interesting from beginning to end. It doesn't start in the way that uh, some traditional autobiographies do. It starts from her story in China. It goes back to tell stories about her life and it, it sets the foundation for you. I, I think it's very, very interesting to read. It's not just informative. It's not just good to get a different perspective, but it's actually a very interesting and entertaining book to read. Now, some of the things that the book includes her disfellowshipping as a teenager and how that happened with her boyfriend. And I thought that was very interesting, that that aspect, because as Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, the judicial arrangement can be very tough on people. And when you're in a relationship, I mean, let's just keep it real. The majority of Jehovah's Witnesses get some kind of judicial action, whether it be reproof or disfellowshipping for some kind of sexual immorality. And her telling her story about how she interacted with her boyfriend and her, you know, her ignorance of sex and all of those things were very, very interesting, you know, from the perspective of a Jehovah's Witness teen. I think if you were a Jehovah's Witness teen, or even if you're just interested in how Jehovah's Witnesses think as they're coming of age as teenagers, that part is very, very interesting. Something else I thought was very interesting from that same part was her father's death while she was disfellowshipped. And if you're not one of Jehovah's Witnesses, or if you've been away from the organization for a very long time, 
One of the things that you may not think too much about is the shunning aspect, uh, depending on how you left the organization. But especially for those who have never been witnesses and are curious about how the organization functions, that story in itself helps explain how inhumane the shunning aspect of the religion is. Uh, the fact that she had to sit in the back of the kingdom hall at her father's own memorial service truly helps to understand the ridiculous ostracism and just the disgusting manner in which Jehovah's Witnesses break apart families. Another very interesting part, and I don't want to give away too much about this, but her marriage to someone that she admitted that she didn't truly love. You know, like I said, I don't want to give that part away. I think that is truly interesting, but that was, you know, really, really something I loved reading because it's a perspective that I just couldn't understand. It's something that, you know, I think a lot of people go through, but they don't say out loud. So to see someone express that, I thought was, you know, really a window in a world that I just couldn't understand. Now, there were some very important themes that were woven throughout the book. And I just wanted to point out the top 10 themes that I thought were the most important and that I paid attention to throughout the book. Now, one of them was how ignorance isn't always bliss, you know, and ultimately what I mean by that is being in a cult shuts out the outside world. And so throughout the book, Amber explains that her being raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses obviously cut her off from the rest of the world. As a Jehovah's Witness, you're raised to believe that the outside world is evil and in the hands of Satan. And after she exited the cult, she realized that there was so much about the world she just didn't understand, even in a basic sense, like when it came to entertainment and music. And I thought that, you know, for, for especially for people who were never Jehovah's Witnesses and aren't very familiar with Jehovah's Witnesses, when they read this portion, they're going to be very, very interested into understanding how someone who is in their 30s is so shut off to the world and doesn't understand simple things that you would expect a 30 year old to understand. Another very important theme that she mentioned was the white savior complex. It's so interesting that many Jehovah's Witnesses do not think about race or racial issues at all. You know, of course, as Jehovah's Witnesses, you are encouraged to be neutral when it comes to political or social issues. So race obviously is something that's not discussed often. But she discussed how she felt almost like, you know, a colonizer coming over to this Asian country trying to tell these people how to worship God the right way. And it's interesting because from a witness perspective, as I mentioned, race is something that's just not talked about too often. But witnesses never seem to critically think, hey, doesn't it seem weird that this religion is only popular in places where Christianity has already been a mainstay? Hmm, why doesn't the all-powerful, almighty God make sure that this religion is more popular in lands where there are more non-white people. Does God only like white people? It, it really makes you critically think. Obviously, there's an issue with Christian missionaries, regardless of whether you're a Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, whatever type of Christianity you subscribe to. The fact is this white savior complex is part of the missionary work that many people do, and, and you can see it throughout history. Another theme that I thought was important was respecting and embracing new and different cultures. One of the things you notice from the very beginning of the book is that Amber was very open to embracing Chinese and Taiwanese culture. She was very open to learning the language and tried to learn the nuances and the idiosyncrasies of uh, Chinese culture. And I thought that was very nice. It, it, go to, it, it went to show how good of a person she was because one of the things I've noticed over my time when I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses was that many people would go serve where the need is great, but they didn't have a respect for the land where they served. You know, they kind of just brought their same mentality over to where they served and, you know, they went along with the culture, but they didn't really respect it. But you can tell from her words that she truly respected the culture. And I thought that was really nice. Another important theme, female empowerment. 
and the lack of female empowerment in the Jehovah's Witness religion. Even as a full believer, Amber recognized that there was just so much disrespect for women and they were treated as second class citizens. And if you've been following my page from the very beginning, you know that that was one of the main reasons why I stopped believing in the Jehovah's Witness religion because of the rampant misogyny that is a foundation of the religion. Another important point was towards the end of the book, Amber not fearing death, but learning to live her life now rather than just looking towards the future for some new system. And I think that is one thing that all ex Jehovah's Witnesses have to come to terms with. It's very difficult accepting that, you know, this future of a paradise is not actually coming. So learning to live your life now is totally different from the Jehovah's Witness mindset. And it's interesting to see someone explain it in their words about how they did come to that mindset. Another great theme um, was the quick and sharp effect of shunning. I went through it. Uh, almost every ex Jehovah's Witness goes through it. Seeing how quick people are willing to shun you and cut you off, including family. And of course, that resonated with me because it's so recent that I've been shunned. You know, I thought about my family, how quick many of them cut me off, even ones that I was really, really close to showing no concern, no interest, not even caring to ask about my daughter, you know, who's who's a toddler. And so seeing Amber explain how quick the shunning happened to her, it just reminded me of my shunning. And if you've been shunned, you will certainly relate to that. Another important theme was how to rebuild your life after being shunned. Understanding that there is life outside of the organization is a new and amazing thing, but that freedom is something that you can embrace and build on. A few more important themes, the fact that the world is not evil the way that Jehovah's Witnesses paint it, and this is certainly true. The world is not some evil terrible place. Yes, there are bad things in the world. Yes, there are bad people in the world. But you know what? There are bad things in the Jehovah's Witness organization, and there are bad people in the Jehovah's Witness organization. The world is all gray space. Everything isn't black and white. It isn't good and bad, us versus them. There's a lot of gray in the world. There's a lot of nuance. And it's nice to be in the world and experience the fact that it's not some evil hellscape the way Jehovah's Witnesses paint it. Two more themes. Uh, the fact that you can deal with loss and death as a non-religious person. Amber lost her child uh, and that was big news in uh, New York City. And she learned to deal with it. And, you know, some people leave the organization and they're still religious and there's nothing wrong with that. But many of us leave the religion and we are no longer religious. But she learned to deal with loss, even without feeding her mind some fake thoughts of a resurrection or the new system to come. And I thought that aspect was very interesting. And one last important theme, the fact that life goes on after you leave the organization. For many people, when they leave the organization, there is a big feeling of depression because they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They focus their whole life on being one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And now when they leave, they have no sense of direction. And it's understandable because the cult does that purposely. They want to focus you on the organization only so that when you leave, you almost collapse because you don't really understand the outside world. But one of the things she describes in her book is the fact that life does go on and you can build great friendships, great relationships, get a career and, and re reinvent yourself in a way that the cult doesn't want you to. So two last thoughts when it comes to this book. Uh, there were two quotes that I really, really loved. Um, one of them, Amber said, I have called a truce with the unknown and I am learning to love live with the disquiet. I do not attempt to pray to a God who will not answer. Now, I know many of the people who watch this channel and who have left the organization are still religious. They're still theists. They believe in a God. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but there are those like me who do not. And that quote really resonated with me because there's somewhat of an existential crisis that comes with, you know, not believing in a God anymore or realizing that your thoughts have, you know, your thoughts and beliefs have come down like dominoes. Everything has fallen out. But then when you start to think a little bit more, you do some critical thinking and you expand your mind a little bit, you realize that it's okay to come to terms with the fact that you don't have all the answers. And as a Jehovah's Witness, you always felt like you have all the answers. Or even if you don't know all the answers, you can always look up the answers because the faithful and discreet slave has the answers. But it's okay to accept that you don't have the answers. And maybe there isn't a God up there listening to you. Maybe there is. But it's okay to say that you don't have the answers. And you can come to terms with that. Another quote that I really liked, and and it went to show how good of a person Amber Scora seems to be. She said, to any of my old witness friends and family, if you've dared to read this far, know that I will be here waiting for you if you ever begin to question things. My door is open, I still love you, and I promise that a happy and fulfilling life is possible out here. That to me was truly loving. You know, if you ever watch any interviews with Amber Score, I was saying to my wife, she comes off like a really nice kindergarten teacher. But it goes to show that not everyone who leaves the organization is bitter or mad. She still shows love. Even though people shunned her and treated, treat her like she's dead and show no love for her. They treat her in such a terrible and disgusting manner and she's still willing to show love. Truly uh, an interesting read. That was my review. I definitely highly suggest for everyone to take a look at this book, Leaving the Witness by Amber Scora. I think you'll enjoy it. It's very interesting. Whether you were one of Jehovah's Witnesses or not, I think it is a very interesting book. So that was my book review. I'll be back with another book review soon on another XJW book. And look forward to my video coming out on Friday. We're going to talk about the Watchtower lesson for this weekend, talking about Jehovah's Witnesses and child sex abuse. There are some serious issues, some serious lying going on with that article. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. That video is going to come out on Friday. But thanks again for watching the Irregular Pioneer channel. I'm your host, Matt. We'll see you again very soon. Thank you, folks. Take care.